Hello everyone, I'm Cody Bender, the DCE intern here at St. John Lutheran Church here in Woodbury, Minnesota. And here, I'm coming to you with another fireside chat and having another story given to you. So now, um, here's an example of a, this story. So when a, per, a person's little, let's use Cody. When Cody was a little kid, a lot of what he was told he had to believe, right? So when he was told, hey, don't go touch that really sharp plant because it'll hurt, right? Cody had to believe that. Now, Cody has thinking mechanisms that we could, you know, see like, oh, there's, there might be pokey, it might hurt us, it might really be sharp, but you know, and until I poke it, how will I really know if it's sharp or anything? Right now, I have one of Cody has one of two options. He can either trust the person who ever told him not to touch it, and really, really trust him that you know he, this person's right. Don't touch that because it's pokey, or you know Cody should touch that plant because I really don't trust this person, um, or I do, but like I really want to find out if it's pokey. And now it can go either way. And you could find out either way of it being pokey just by not touching it because you're trusting someone or by touching it and finding out it probably is pokey. Usually if it looks pokey, it's probably pokey. Uh, and that, but that comes from experiences of getting poked, even just me saying that. So today I'm going to talk to you about faith and believing in something. And right, I had this person in the example of telling me, hey, you shouldn't touch that. It is pokey. It's going to hurt. And now by by trust and, and by faith, I'm trusting this person saying, I shouldn't touch that. It's going to hurt me. And this is a, a theme we see out throughout almost the whole Bible, right? Uh, it's something we've seen all the way from the promises in Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. But there's really one uh, chapter I want to narrow in on. I won't read the whole chapter. It's super long. But you, I encourage you to and open up your Bibles and look at it. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about Hebrews 11 here. So if you want to open up your Bibles to Hebrews 11, that'd be great. So Hebrews 11, you'll notice the title is literally called By Faith. And it's a super cool chapter. So it goes over almost everything from the, the Old Testament into the New Testament. Which is saying a lot, because a lot happened in those years from the Old Testament. I'm talking about Abel and Cain and Abel. I'm talking about them all the way through um, David and even more people on there. And all these things and even more, um, by faith is saying is here a lot. You see the word faith pop up here. And again, it's titled by faith. And it goes over all these stories of how, you know, typical Bible stories that you hear of saying Noah. Let's look at Noah, for example. You know, by faith he had to be... He had to trust that, you know, God was going to send a flood and he had to build an ark, even though people were making fun of him for building an ark with no rain. You know, by faith, he trusted God. Or let's use Abraham, right? Saying he's going to be made a father of many nations at a super old age, right? You have to kind of laugh at that, but you have to trust that by faith, something's going to come out of it. Uh, you can then move all the way to David and, and the prophets and everyone in between and saying by faith, they trusted in God and, and great things happened. Not saying there wasn't bumps along the way, right? We all know everyone falls short. We're not perfect human beings. But yet, by faith, we we're carried through. And really going into a very uh, on-the-surface covering of every single one of these people. But I, I really want to, to share with you kind of the, the ending of these, of these verses with uh, 39 and 40. In all these, so talking about the, the people beforehand, all the, the bad things, good and bad, and, and all, everything. And all these, though commanded through faith, did not receive what is promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So really in 39 and 40, and, and this is why I'm bringing out, uh, if the promise that was made for, for these Old Testament people, right, was not the ones was not the ultimate, was, was kept. So I'm not saying these promises weren't kept and, and they're not going back on it. But the promise that God had something better for us. And, and we know what that is and I, and I want you to know what that is too. 
Uh, and I'm not going to apply it. I'm going to tell you it's that Jesus Christ saved us and he's our salvation. And that by faith, through trusting in him, we're saved. And that's something that's beautiful and amazing. That all these people throughout the Old Testament kept the laws of Leviticus, kept the laws of so many other things. And yet coming to our age, especially nowadays, we see that by faith we are saved, right? And we do good works because of what Christ has done for us. And a lot of these people and a lot of the, what they went through, um, they did by faith and we should do too. So let us walk in faith with this, uh, the people who have gone before us, all the way from the Old Testament, all the way from Cain and Abel, all the way to now with people around us and walk with one another in Christ. Because we know that Christ has saved us through faith and it's not by works, but it's by him. And that's a, and that's a beautiful gift that we can get. And that's what um, the author is writing here in verses 39 and 40, 40, saying Christ is our ultimate promise in that you know, by faith, we're able to be saved. And that's something beautiful. So if you could fold your hands, bow your heads, and we'll pray it out. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your Son to die on the cross, defeat sin and death, and the devil rise again and ascend into heaven with you. Thank you so much for giving us the faith that we have uh, through the Holy Spirit that we could believe in your Son and that we could go out proclaiming your name and sharing that news with others because it's such a joyous news. Even though it is a broken world we live in today, it's not too much from back then and that we should walk with one another in faith. In your name we pray. Amen.